Former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has thrown his support behind a voice to Parliament, declaring he'll vote yes when a referendum is held. His intervention is notable because when he was Prime Minister, he opposed the voice. Here's what he told Q&A in 2017. I do not believe what would in, in effect be a third chamber of Parliament available only to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander okay. people is consistent with our uh, constitutional it, values. Michael. Every single law that goes through the Parliament, whether it's tax, whether it's defence, whether it's social security, whether it's health, they all affect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people because they're part of the Australian community. And that would mean that that assembly would, it would have the right, if it chose, to, uh, to examine every piece of legislation. It would be, in effect, a third chamber. I don't think it's a good idea, and if it were put up in a referendum, it would go okay. down in I flames. I want to go back to Teela. That's my view. Malcolm Turnbull joins me now. Welcome to the program. Thank you. You were vehemently opposed, as we saw there, to the concept of a voice to Parliament. What made you change your mind? Well, it has achieved enormous momentum. It is the only form of constitutional recognition that Indigenous Australians are seeking. And after centuries of disempowerment and dispossession, we need a very good reason to oppose it. Now, but I have reservations about it. I have misgivings. Yes. But, and it will be an enormous change to the way our parliamentary system I works. I just want to understand a bit mm. about how, how you have changed your position. Mm. It's taken you a long time. It's five years. Mm -hmm. um, what's made you have a change of heart? Well, I've reflected on it, obviously. Mm. Uh, it, I mean, I still believe it will make a very big change. It's not a symbolic change. It's mm -hmm. not like the Republic, which was largely symbolic. Uh, this is conferring real power, real political power, to the voice, which will be an assembly of Indigenous Australians chosen exclusively by Indigenous Australians. And while it will not be a third chamber mm. in the way the Senate is a second chamber, mm. it won't have a legal veto, it will have enormous influence, as Anthony Albanese conceded just a few weeks ago. You were explicit at the time that it would be, you characterised it as a third chamber. That's an argument that could sink a referendum. Do you now regret calling it a third chamber? Yeah, I do regret using that term because it was misunderstood. I mean, I was never intended to convey the idea that it would be a third chamber like the Senate but is a second chamber. Wasn't that chamber. expression, wasn't that phrase used in order to make it sound like something that was should be troubling or, Look, or a threat it, it to was, it Australian was politi democracy. Well, it's, I don't know whether threat's the right word, mm. but it is a... People will have different views as to whether it's a threat or not. It's Do you definitely, use those words advisedly? Yeah, it's definitely a very big change. I mean, mm. it is... Look, the statement from the heart, the Uluru Statement for the Heart, spoke of the torment of powerlessness mm -hmm. that Indigenous Australians experienced. And it proposed, and it was a big new radical idea at the time, it mm. proposed the voice uh, to Parliament as the answer to this, or an answer to this. And it was, and this, the voice, will be powerful. Mm. And it will be heard, and it will be heeded. Yes, it that's... can't be abolished, Yes, and it can't be have its reports put on a shelf, the... like something from a you know, a government committee. Yes, and these are all about now, but I do want to understand the change of mm. mind. You say you've mm. re reflected, but at the time you were you were not in a strong position politically. Did you reject it in order to appease the Conservatives in your own government? No, not at all. It was the Cabinet. I mean, uh, I only had one portfolio in, when I was Prime sure, Minister. Sure, but you were very... Um, the, you had uh, a very powerful voice yeah. as the Prime Minister, so the question oh, I, I did. remains no, I why did. you termed it in that way and what for and why. Well... That was the Cabinet's view. Mm -hmm. But it was you know, your view too. It was my view too, absolutely. Yes. So what's changed apart well, in your reflection? Well, I think the term third chamber mm. is an unhelpful one because, as I said, because it's apt to confuse, right? Because some Barnaby people Joyce hear... Barnaby apologise for using that term. Do, do you? Are you oh, sorry no, too that no, you used no, it? I, I, no, I'm not going to apologise for, mm. you know, political, political discourse five years ago. But, yes. but what I would say is that I think... We've got to be clear, as I said, it's not a, th it's not a third chamber in the way the Senate is a second chamber, mm -hmm. but as Anthony Albanese himself observed, speaking very ca candidly and constructively about it, mm. as he said, it would take a very brave government to do something 
relating to Indigenous affairs that the voice opposed. Mm. So it will be, you know, it, it is not like the Productivity Commission or the ACCC or, you know, some other government advisory group. It mm. will be in the constitution and it will be representing Indigenous people. It, mm. the, the members of the voice will not be there because they are experts in Indigenous affairs. They'll be there in the same way that members of the House of Representatives are there mm. because they're representing people. Yes. Now so in they'll, your... have it, they'll have that, that their voice yes. will be one with enormous legitimacy constitutionally so is, so question, and democratically. People come to you and they want to know why it is at this point. Was it Albanese who changed your mind in his speech at Gama? Because as recently as your autobiography in 2020, you were still saying that it was a third chamber. So it's, it's a short space of time. Was it... The well, eloquence at Gulf well, that I changed think, <clears throat> Well, I'd, it, it was a very good speech mm. that Anthony gave at, uh, at Gama. But no, I, look, I've been reflecting on it for a while. It's, mm -hmm. It has been, it was a decision that we took that has, I've, be, it's, I've been concerned about it. I think, Did you know... Did you think you were perhaps on the wrong side of history? No, I think that, I th look, the only alternative, we, there was no way we could have come out in support of it, mm. right? There was just zero chance of that politically uh, and realistically so at the it was time. A political what decision. we could have well mm. I'm, I was yes. pr prime minister prime mm -hmm. ministers are politicians mm -hmm. this is all about this is about politics and this is about power the voice is a very political thing very I'm going to interrupt and, and forgive me for doing this no. it's only because it's such yeah. a big day we have to sure. talk about Morrison mm. in a moment but just to understand where you're up to now if the prime minister asked you to join him in the referendum campaign would you do that Oh, sure. No, I'd, I'd certainly, I'd certainly, I mean, I've written, I've put a lot of thought mm -hmm. into a 2,000 word essay that's in The Guardian today. I encourage people to read it. Yes. Uh, there's a, it's a, it, this is a big issue. This is the biggest change to our constitution in my lifetime. And it, it will change the way our parliament operates. So people shouldn't imagine this is symbolism. Mm -hmm. I believe our parliamentary democracy can handle it, but it will be a big change. You, you still have mis misgivings about it. We don't have time to go into all of mm. them. You said it's going to be a wild ride. It could how, well be a wild ride, yeah. But do you, how important is Politics it? Politics is a wild ride, yes, believe me. How important, you <laughs> use those words advisedly again, yeah. how important is it that it succeeds? Oh, it's very, well, it's very important that the referendum succeeds. And I was, you know, obviously I know a bit about referendums mm -hmm. and not successful referendums. Uh, at the time in 2017, we all thought it had not a snowball's chance in mm. hell. We thought it was doomed to catastrophic defeat. Different I now. think now mm -hmm. it's winnable, yes. but I say that with great trepidation all because right. there's a lot of work to be done. Understood. And, and I'm sorry that we have to tackle two things today because it is very important, but these are mm. extraordinary sure. revelations about uh, the former Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. Let me just be clear. Did you ever take on secret roles yourself in no. the government? No, I think this is, this is one of the most appalling uh, things I've ever heard in our federal government. I mean, the idea that a Prime Minister would be sworn in to minist other ministries secretly uh, is incredible. I'm, 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 I'm astonished that Morrison thought he could do it. I'm astonished that Prime Minister and Cabinet went along with it. That's the department. And I'm even more astonished that the Governor-General was party to it. I mean, this is sinister stuff. This is secret government. I mean, what Albanese said today about it is absolutely right. This is the sort of thing that doesn't, it's not something we associate with our form of democracy. You're actually going further in a way than Albanese, who used the term tin, tin pot. You're saying it's sinister. It is sinister. It is very sinister because, because it, is, it is secret. I mean, the, look, you know, it, it's, it's unusual and unprecedented enough for a prime minister to be sworn into another department mm. Uh, you know, other than his own. But, I mean, you do it, obviously, if a minister is away. I was sworn in as Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources when Barnaby was out of action for a few months. And presumably everyone knew oh, about oh, that. Oh, totally. There was a, I was sworn in. There was a press release. Mm. Yes, it was completely above board. Mm. But doing things in this, this secret way... I mean, look, fund, what, what's democracy about? I mean, fundamentally, we, are, we the people are entitled to know who is governing our country. We so, need to know... Who's the minister for this? Who's the minister for that? And if, in fact, these things are all being done secretly, that's not a democracy. 
This flies in the face so of questions, everything we there believe. There are questions about the Governor General, but first of all on Scott Morrison. Do you understand why he did this? There might be an explanation no. around health, but when it comes to finance and the other mm, ministries, no. you know him very well. You served with I him. Do, yeah. You've had complicated mm. relationships with him, but why do you think he did it? Well, I, I mean, it's, that's a psychological explanation. I mean, because I, to be honest, I can't understand it. Because let's assume as Prime Minister, and I know what it's like to mm. be Prime Minister, you felt that you needed to have the discretions and authorities of the health minister or the finance mm. minister, well, then you should do it openly. You should be sworn to those portfolios and then explain why you want to do it. But to do it secretly in a way that the public don't know about it and your cabinet colleagues don't know about it is incredible. I mean, this is not... Scott was meant to be leading a centre-right conservative government. This is not conservative. This is throwing aside all of the traditions of Westminster parliamentary democracy. Clearly a lot further to go with this story. Thank you very much indeed for your company this evening. Thank you.